We are back today on another episode of Pack Attack. It's our fifth day in a row to jumpstart Pack Attack this year. The final day in a row of having Pack Attack every day in a row. After today, we're going to fall back into the schedule of attempting to have a new episode every other day. My whole plan is to kind of rotate. One day will be March to October. The next day, Pack Attack. March to October, Pack Attack. Alternate. But I might hold off on the next episode of Pack Attack until Monday, just because today Today, I also have March to October coming out, so I gotta get those schedules offset again, and then that gives me an extra day to grind some of the new Team Affinity chapter rewards to add to the pack wheel. But anyway, let's talk about today's episode, and you can't talk about today without going back to last episode, because you guys... You guys are absolutely insane. I don't know if you realize how insane it is that I'm sitting here looking at last episode being at 54 likes. Not only is that crazy because that's giving us an automatic 5,400 stubs to go towards our packs today, but like guys, that video is only at like 200 views. That means one in four of you are hitting the like button, which is a ridiculous ratio. So keep it up, keep destroying the like button and we'll keep adding stubs and we'll keep opening up more and more packs. Shifting over now to the stub bank though, since we spun the wheel in the last episode, we didn't really have anything to sell. So we only managed to add 220 stubs to the bank, which in addition to the leftover stubs that we had extra after spinning the pack wheel yesterday, brings us up to 10,292 stubs in the bank. So that's kind of the trade-off this early on. We spin the wheel, we don't really get to add stubs to the bank. But we do have our new best player, our first diamond to the team on Pack Attack this year. None other than last year's cover boy, Jazz Chisholm Jr. And I'm not gonna lie, this isn't like a great card, especially hitting-wise. He's solid, but if you compare him to some of our bats we have on this team already, he's not really much of a better hitter but i'm throwing him at short that's where it makes the most sense to put him he'll be a good fielder over there and even though he doesn't have like great hitting this is just one of those all around cards that's just pretty good at everything it's kind of crazy though with only having one pack wheel spin and then opening one ball in pack from the ranked program that i still made five upgrades to this team because along with jazz chisholm i added brandon drury to second base i actually did what could be seen as a downgrade because i brought Nolan Gorman onto the starting lineup and I got rid of Rizzo. I figure Gorman is just kind of straight up a better hitter than Rizzo is, and we could move Isak Paredes over to first. So we take a little bit of a hit defensively, but hopefully the bats can make up for it. We were also able to add a gold starter, the first gold pitcher on the team, Merrill Kelly, and then one more upgrade to the bullpen, just a bronze Drew Smith. Now, kind of speaking of the ranked program, I was thinking about it after last episode and the fact that we're already 27 points in after only having played four games. So I want to make a bit of a change to what I said about the ranked program, which I originally planned on. And then for some reason at the last second, I backed out of. But then now that I'm looking back at the program and just how easy it is to make progress, especially when the second drop comes out, I'm thinking this is a change that I want to make. So it's not that big of a change. We're still going to be able to open up, sell, use everything we get out of the packs in the ranked program and the stubs and all that. The only two Two changes is this 75 point player, this McCutcheon type player, whoever it is for the next one. We're going to keep this as like a season exclusive player. So when I earn him, I can throw him on the team, but I can only keep him on the team for the rest of that ranked season. Once the season's over, he's got to go. You know, we probably won't get up to that 75 points until the second drop comes out. So that'd be a couple of weeks into the season anyway. But just looking at how easy some of these stats are to get once the second drop comes out. I mean, right here, without the repeatable mission, I'm pretty sure this is 75 points on its own, and these are not difficult to get. And then especially throw in that eventually we'll be playing plenty of games on the higher difficulties. We also have the entirety of the first drop points to get. And not only is this player going to be easy to get by that point, but so is the World Series reward. So I also want to make a change to this because it feels kind of cheap that come the second half of the next ranked season, it'll be that easy to unlock the World Series reward from the program. So I think the change that I want to make for this, I'm not set on it yet, so I'm just kind of running it past you guys to see what you think but i think for the world series reward if we unlock it from the program i'm gonna put this pack 
on the wheel so that way we still technically unlock it and unlock the ability to earn it we just have to get one extra step to actually get the player on the team or sell the player it just feels i don't know it feels like when it's the same reward as actually getting up to a 900 rating which is like the main goal of pack attack it just feels kind of cheap to be able to get and use the reward in the same way but just getting it so easy the other alternative if we don't go the route of putting it on the wheel would just be to use that the same way that we use the mccutcheon type player the 75 point player and just use the ranked reward from the program for the rest of that season if we do get to world series or if we get any of the other players from the rating that'll still be the same we still unlock them we still use them we still sell them the same way we always have so anyways with that out of the way in just under an hour and 20 minutes left of this first rank season we're gonna put our 4-0 record and our 317 rating on the line and just remember guys if you're enjoying pack attack so far this year and you're not subscribed to the channel do me a favor hit that subscribe button for me all right all right, here we go. What do we got? We have Merrill Kelly on the mound. He's got a gold on the mound too with a lot of golds in the lineup. All right, this actually might be player rating wise the worst team we've faced so far in Pack Attack. Back on the road though, so we get to see our new Jazz Chisholm right away, leading it off. And he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna roll over on a sinker right down the middle in his first AB, first pitch of his first AB. Hmm, I guess his slider doesn't break as far as I thought it did. I thought that was diving out of the zone. And Spencer Steer, yeah, I got way too far under that. So nothing going on in the first, even though kind of got a lot of pitches to hit. Oh, and we got his leadoff Jazz Chisholm Jr. to do the same thing. Roll over on a sinker. And on the second pitch, we got a pop fly out to Steer and left. And a broken bat. I was hoping for the strikeout. I'm not going to lie. Kind of disappointed we didn't get it, but I'll always take a 1-2-3 first inning. All right, Gorman, let's see what you got. I put a lot of faith in him. Not only did I put a bronze in over a silver, but I'm also batting him fourth. And is that... It is going to get through. All right, I hit it just a little bit too hard. Still not making great swings on these pitches that are finding themselves in the meat of the plate, though. Castilla, yeah, oh, that's a double play. All right. And then I, I mean, even though that was more towards the corner, that's still so hittable. I've only seen 12 pitches, but that's because he's throwing everything in the zone. All right, we get a one pitch rollover from him. If it keeps going like this, man, this is going to be a very quick game. Okay, we got another ground ball. And Kelly snags it. That's 12 pitches apiece. Four innings pitched on the mound between us, and we have 24 total pitches. I can't even sit here and say I want to be more patient, because all I would be doing at that point is taking strikes. There we go. All right, do more of that. Oh, and then I, then I swing, and he's got the shift on, so shooting it right back up the middle isn't a hit. Vasquez, you know what? I'll take it at this point. That is a pitch I should be getting a round on, but I'll take what I can get. Let's just try and not ground into a double play this time. And I got under it with Ruiz. Come on, man. Make a good swing. Once I figure this out and actually place the PCI where it needs to be placed, I'm going to be off to the races. And in the meantime, I'll hit another ground ball. Oh, this is... This is not fun so far. Oh my god, we can't get a strikeout either, and that's going to be his first hit of the game. I didn't even think I had to dive for that off the bat, and then I did, and we don't get the play made. Dude, I... I can't believe I got away with that. I hung that curve so bad, I really thought he was about to go up 2-0. And there we go, right to Gorman. Gave up our first hit, but we're facing the minimum. This game is just awful. This is a terrible game on both sides so far. Somebody needs to do something, because this is ugly. I'm still hitting it on the ground. I can't get under anything, but at least we got a leadoff base hit. There we go. Perfect to center. No, that don't die. Don't die on me. All right, it is going to go. 
Supercharged Spencer Steer one more time. I didn't check on how much longer he has being supercharged, but if this is the last episode until Monday, this might be our last episode with him supercharged. And he's getting another bomb for me. Oh, and now we're going. Now we finally figured it out. Back-to-back -back perfect swings. Back-to-back -back extra base hits. And then I go right back to... How did I even make contact on that at all? That was a very late swing. The ball didn't even look like it was within the outer PCI. Why is that not just a swing and a miss? Oh my god, and then I'm under it again and hit it weak. <laughs> and just as quickly as I got going, we're right back to doing absolutely nothing. At least I took the lead. At least I got my two runs. Alright, there we go. I cannot avoid this guy's bat. I don't know if I'm going to get a single strikeout in this game, but as long as I can keep it weak, get the outs quick, guess there's not much to complain about. Okay, he all of a sudden decided he wanted to be patient that at bat, and we used it against him. There's our first punch out of the game. Oh, Vasquez to lead it off? Is that actually going to get down fair? Okay, I did not think off the bat that that was going to be a fair ball. Oh, and then Ruiz. I'm pounding it into the ground right away. Come on, Jazz. You're a new star player. Let's do something today. He still can't not hit the ball on the ground. And, of course, it doesn't get through. It's three at-bats for Jazz and three ground outs on sinkers. Oh, my God. And then I'm jammed. That's actually going to drop in, though. Oh, no. I don't, I don't need to score my runs like that. I just don't feel good about that. Oh, and then I'm under it with Steer. He's the only one that can get under it. He's gotten under it all three times he's come to the plate today. And another rollover. We are keeping the pitch count very low. As long as this game goes a full nine, Merrill Kelly might be able to go a full nine. Oh, never mind. He finally waited back on the cutter. Yeah, I guess when that's the first pitch, I'm throwing almost every righty. At some point, anybody's going to wait back and be ready for that. Okay, there we go. Back to getting him to pop it up. Weak contact. And we jammed him. Gave up the run. We just got to get it back. Oh my, there is no way. There is no way. I just got blown away by a 94 mile per hour fastball in. Dude, <laughs> I just... I can't hit the sinker. I am on top of it every time. This pitch. I swear, they made it more difficult this year. They didn't just make it di more difficult to throw on pinpoint, but they actually made the pitch more difficult to hit. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just suck, but I'm having so much trouble picking up the sinkers this year. I guess I can't hit the straight fastballs either. Probably because I was swinging under that in case it was a sinker. There we go. Let's give him some of them. I need to throw more of my sinker. Yeah, there we go. Nothing but sinkers. Oh, he got under it. See, it, it, at least one of us can adjust. Are we going to get there? Are we going to make a play on this? Oh, wow. I actually thought that was going to get down. Oh my god, and now I'm getting bailed out because my rollover on the sinker hit the base. I, I should not be winning this game. There we go. Yeah, get, get that fraud base runner off the bases with that double play. Roll over on another sinker. Dude, this is absolutely unbelievable. I have never hit this bad this long into a game by one pitch getting the same result. That's probably not true at all. I've, I've had some stinkers in the past. I just, wow, I should not be this frustrated playing at a 317 rating. Oh, no. See, why can he make the adjustments to the sinker? I know we got there, but that's now two sinkers in a row. Or maybe it's not in a row. Either way, he's hit two sinkers deep to the track that I've been able to run down. And I'm getting my fluke base hits. This is why I say I shouldn't be winning this game. But here we are getting through another 1-2-3 inning. I need to do something here in these last two innings to make me feel like I've earned it. He's going to the pen, so at least we get to face somebody else. But I know Sean Armstrong also has a sinker. And it doesn't even take a sinker anymore. 
Oh my god. Year after year, my issue is getting under pitches and popping them up. I don't know if I've ever this consistently in a game had my issue be getting on top of every single pitch. There we go. I made a point to get under that one. And we're going to drive it to the gap. It's all it takes. Get under it a little bit. Get behind it. Hit it on a line. You know what? I'm sitting here complaining and I have my PCI anchored up the entire time. Maybe it's time to make a change. Yeah, go figure. Change the PCI anchor and I'm actually able to hit a line drive. I guess that one was a little bit further up in the zone. So maybe that's not the best example. But at least I have another run I can feel proud of. And nope, right back to hitting it on the ground. That was actually a good pitch, though. That's a good spot. And there's my rollover. So I don't know. Maybe the anchor wasn't the issue. Maybe the the issue is just me. And I'll I'll take it. Even though I feel like he's slowly but surely making more and more good swings, he's gonna run out of time here soon. Oh my god, okay, that was an annoying at bat. A lot of foul balls, all the weak contact bad swings he wouldn't put in play. That's gonna, oh wait, no, and we're not gonna be able to get him back at second. Oh, that was almost a free out. Okay, the grounder's gonna move the runner up, but it's two outs. And I think we should be safe. He got a little bit too far under that one. Ruiz is there. That's eight innings for Merrill Kelly on the mound. We got to keep him out there for one more. Okay. I, I, at least I got under the sinker. That's something. I struck out. We don't want to be striking out. That's throwing away some stubs. And then I get under the cutter. That No, it's not going to drop in. It shouldn't drop in. This might be the worst full nine inning game at the plate that I've ever had where I've still gotten 10 hits. And there is no way that Merrill Kelly is in the yellow 56 pitches in. What's his stamina? 81? Nah. This has to have something to do with the inning count. If he was at 56 pitches in the fourth inning, there's no way he's at yellow energy. Oh, we're seeing a pinch hitter. Okay. I was not expecting that. I guess that's why he took that pitch. Dude, he almost, he almost turned on that and made it 4-2. to two. There we go. We need that one more time. Oh, and of course, we can't get out of it without him at least doing something. I just, I want to leave Kelly in to get the extra stubs for a complete game. We can't let him drive him out of this one. Oh my god. He is not doing this with two outs. He is not bringing the tying run up to the plate and it's his best player in his lineup with two outs. I can't leave Kelly in. He, he's figured something out here at the last possible minute. We have to go to the bullpen. Okay, I, I actually got so scared there when I missed my spot and that crept towards the middle but we get the win I, I don't know if you can say that was dominant i was gonna consider it dominant because he really didn't threaten at any point in that game but it was still only a two-run win but still that might be the most miserable semi-dominant game i've ever played like i put up four runs on 10 hits that's a decent stat line but i played horribly Hey, at least we add one more win onto things before this season ends. We made it all the way up to 404. I'm not sure yet. I guess nobody is really sure yet what the ratings get reset to after a ranked season is over. But if it's anything like last year, we might be low enough where it doesn't really push me back at all. So we can start next season right away at 404. And we got Merrill Kelly up to parallel one. We also got Spencer Steer up to one, our first hitter to parallel one. Oh, and then I forgot 400 rating is another level so we get another season reward that's 750 more stubs and we can just go ahead and get this open it looks like a show pack is what we get out of this so i guess we just open up the show pack as our ranked reward and of course it's nothing but a couple more bronzes although aaron bummer as a lefty in the bullpen not a bad bronze to pull all right now on to see what we got out of that game if we can even call whatever that was a game so our hitting is going to make 6300 stubs the pitching is going to add on another 4600 your likes keep carrying the bonus category another 8804 and we're now up to five wins in a row we have two parallel ones so that puts our multiplier today at times 1.03 
35. And all that brings our final stub count to 20,394. And we're just gonna go straight show packs on this one. We got a 10 pack bundle, four more show packs on top of it. So let's not waste any time. Let's start ripping into these. I guess we are already at the point where like, we don't even know if, well, a silver is going to be an upgrade. I guess at catcher over Vasquez, that probably is an upgrade though. But I also can't help but feel like after a game like that, 20,000 stubs, I can't believe we made that much. And actually Muncie with that power, we'll have to find a way for him to get on the team. But I guess it's really just down to the amount of likes. I mean, you guys keep going crazy with the likes. That also happened to be our fifth win of the series. That was an extra 1,500 stubs. So I guess when you factor in those things, it makes a bit more sense why we had so many stubs today. And I mean, we did get 10 hits. We did get four runs. It's not like we had a bad game statistically. It's just, I feel like, oh, okay, never mind. Let's not worry about what I'm rambling about because we just pulled a diamond. Our first naturally occurring diamond of pack attack this year. Who do we got? It's a purple, so it can only be so exciting. It's Bobby Witt Jr. Okay, that's pretty exciting. You have to imagine this is a guy with potential to keep getting better throughout the year too. So 87 might be the worst he's going to get. Yeah, I don't know, man. Out of all the purple tier diamonds we could have pulled, that's got to be up there as one of the best ones. Now, I'm just trying to think how that'll work on the team. We'll probably have to find a way to move Jazz back to second and then Witt can play short. They'll both be in their primary positions. And I don't know, just off the top of my head without looking at the team, that might mean that the Nolan Gorman tenure on the team was short-lived because I can't really think of a way to fit everybody in the uh, starting lineup with Gorman still around. Down to just three more packs here. Do we have anything else big out of these? Not in that one. Two more and we got nothing and then our last show pack of the day and it's going to give us a couple more silvers that's not terrible a lefty in the bullpen and then duval that's i mean that's a card right there for a silver and then the silver topper one more chance at another upgrade to the team and it's going to be john birdie does he still have no he doesn't still have 99 speed so he probably won't be finding his way into the starting lineup or onto the roster at all but hey i mean if we just look at the results to this episode this was a good one if we throw away how bad it felt like i hit we picked up another win and we picked up another diamond upgrade to the team. But yeah, that's going to bring our first week of pack attack here on MLB 24 to a close. And I just want to say one more time, thank you guys for showing up. I know it took me a little bit longer into the year than I would have liked to get it started. But the fact that there were a decent amount of you guys in the comments of my other videos, in the chat, in my live stream asking where pack attack is. I mean, that's just such a good feeling, man. A couple years ago when I was playing pack attack and there was hardly anybody watching. Watching the series everybody seemed to be only interested in march to october but i just kept playing it because i found it so fun so i was really just doing it for me at that point to now get to the point where people are actually asking for this series asking where it is wanting to see it it just makes me even more excited to continue playing it this year so guys don't forget to hit the like button again keep going crazy with it keep adding stubs towards the next episode we've got a long turnaround until the next one so we've got even more time for likes to trickle in i'm almost scared to see what that like count's gonna be at and also again if you're enjoying pack attack and you're not subscribed to the channel feel free to hit the subscribe button but again guys thanks for watching thanks for stopping by today and i will see you next time